Has a man ever said to you, you ask too many questions? Or worse, a man says you're too needy. Where does most relationship frustration come from? I think it comes from uncertainty or doubt. And certainly when a man goes distant or he becomes silent, it's usually a sign of doubt on his part. He's doubting the relationship and he doesn't know how to properly communicate his doubt. So what he does is he goes inward. He becomes silent. He becomes distant. He starts pulling away. When men do this, it's because they are doubting the relationship. But most importantly, what's happened is it's not doubting you. It's doubting their capacity to actually lean into a healthy, happy relationship. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Now, we have to look at this doubt in three stages. Okay, three stages. There's the early stages of dating. Now, I know this is so difficult for many of you to experience because men have a propensity to come on strong. They lead, they're, they're being driven by lust or limerence. When a man says, oh my God, you're the most amazing woman on the planet. Oh, I could see us traveling together. Oh, I can see us moving in together, getting married. He is driven by lust or limerence in this stage of dating. Now, what you have to recognize, and I know many of you ladies have heard how men love the hunt and men love the chase. I laugh at that. Do you know why I laugh? Because when I hear that narrative, somehow hunting for buffalo equates to, by the way, I'm talking about, you know, Neanderthals, Homo sapiens, the early stage of cave people when they're hunting for food. Somehow that is supposed to equate to men love this hunt that's supposed to equate to relationship for hundreds of thousands of years, the hunting of food is supposed to, re doesn't relate to relationships. You know, back then, back then, by the way, do you realize that most cave people were, re were rather promiscuous? Have you ever heard the phrase men like to spread their seed? Like, so it fascinates me when I hear this, especially when I hear that men are provider protectors as if the, somehow that equates to the divorced man who got financially wiped out in his marriage and somehow he's going to provide and protect for the new relationship. It fascinates me. I really laugh at the rhetoric out there, but let, I'm going off on a tangent. The early stage of dating, you have to recognize that ladies, very little trust is established in the early stage of dating. Very little trust. First off, folks, I want you to know that it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build, <laughs> excuse me, the first layer of trust. Oh, I might sneeze eight more times, okay? It takes about 200 hours of face-to-face -face time to build the second layer of trust and 300 hours of face-to-face -face time to build the third layer of trust. Very little trust is built in the early stages of dating. Very little trust. But Jonathan, we have so much in common. We like sushi. We like paddle. We like pickleball. We like the Rolling Stones. We have so much in common. Do you know where real trust is built in the early stages of dating? Is when people operate from a radically honest place. Radical honesty. What is radical honesty? By the way, here's a coffee mug. It says radical honesty. Do you see that? By the way, I have a shop uh, listed below. You can get this cup. What is radical honesty? It's being vulnerable. It's being authentic. It's being transparent to the best of your ability. Most humans have walls up in the early stage of dating because they're feeling doubt, whether you are a man or a woman. So it's very common for a man to become distant or silent in the early stages because very little trust has been built together because most likely the two of you have not been really vulnerable, authentic, and transparent with one another. In addition, number two is laying your cards on the table. Folks, when we meet total strangers, we know nothing about them. It is important to dissect their entire life. 
It, it's important to whether what happened in their childhood, what they experienced in their childhood, what they experienced in their first marriage, what was the ending of their first marriage, what was the ending of their most significant relationships to really get granular. But Jonathan, he says he's a private man. He won't share those things. Folks, how can you make decisions about your future when you know very little about someone? Even think about it when you're going to get a job or excuse me, when you're in, let's say you happen to be an employer and you've got a resume in front of you and you've got all this person's work experience, but you really don't know how they performed in each job. You might have a letter of recommendation from someone, but that's just one person's opinion. They might've been a total jackass in their past, relation, past uh, work experience. They might've been late all the time. They might've been inconsistent. Do you realize that in dating and relationships, we barely find out very much information about someone's past experiences and the emotional effects of these past experiences. And the third piece of the puzzle is what I call the rules of engagement. What is the standard we are going to be dating by? What is this standard? Many of you who follow my work know, you know my standard. I'm seeking a relationship that where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That's the rules of engagement. See, very few of you actually establish your standards right in the very get-go, and you wonder why somebody goes, oh, and the minute you do, see, here's the problem with many of you ladies. You don't establish this before physical intimacy. You establish this after physical intimacy, and then all of a sudden he acts silent or he disappears. And let me just say this. When a man starts acting distant, silent, disappears, that's his decision that he is not capable of going any deeper in this relationship. So I said we have to look at this at stages. What about a more seasoned relationship? You've been dating for three to six months to nine months. Hopefully, the two of you have made agreements with one another in this relationship. You've made agreements with one another. What's the purpose of dating? The purpose of dating is a vetting process to determine if we should explore a relationship together. And what's the purpose of a relationship? It's to explore a deeper connection with another human being to see if we should go the distance from a long-term perspective. I believe the biggest problem today in our dating, mating, and relating environment is most people are experiencing a very surface type of relationship. It's very casual. Their only agreement is monogamy and exclusivity. They haven't agreed to exploring something deeper. If you haven't read the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, by the way, this probably is, this is great for those 20 and 30 year olds, but even for those of us in midlife, and midlife is after baby making years and before retirement, basically, this are essential conversations to get to know another human being essential conversations to get to know another human being. And I think it's important to begin establishing some agreements with one another fairly early on. Like I said, monogamy, exclusivity, if you're going to have physical intimacy with one another. The problem is today, okay, ladies, I know you've been indoctrinated to believe that men are the leaders of the relationship, but I'm here to say most men are rather clueless. They're winging it. You are in charge of your relationship destiny. Don't live it up to a man. And if you want to build deeper emotional intimacy, then maybe you might want to study what it is to be emotionally intimate with another human being. If you haven't read the book, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters, I highly recommend this. Because what's happening today, why men become distant and silent is very little trust has been built between the two of you. And I think one of the reasons why, for those of us in midlife, is they don't understand the purpose of the relationship. They're not intentional about this purpose. And let me tell you, for those in their 20s and 30s, oftentimes the purpose is making babies and raising a family. For those of us in midlife, 
What's missing is a shared purpose, a shared passion with one another. Let me repeat that. What's oftentimes missing is a shared purpose or a shared passion with one another. And so because of that, there isn't enough trust built. And because, as I said before, why does someone become silent or go distant? Because they are experiencing doubt. Many of you are having surface relationships or your relationships are built on the transaction of entertaining one another or physical intimacy with one another. It's not actually building something that's substantial. If you want to read a really powerful book, Read the book uh, by Gary Zukoff called Spiritual Partnership. Now, mind, mind you, this is all about developing that relationship within yourself, but you're going to find that if you find yourself in a more seasoned relationship that's been around for a year, you might want to really ask yourself, have we built the deep roots of trust with one another? Have we established what our shared passion is? Have we established our shared purpose? as to why we're even doing this relationship. You see, many people are actively dating simply for companionship, connection, and sex. Companionship, connection, and sex. And what's missing is a real intentionality towards commitment. That understanding of that shared passion, that shared purpose, that shared vision with one another, because without a shared vision, People are winging it. They're rolling the dice. And it's no wonder that doubt occurs because they're not actively talking about their feelings with one another. Ladies, I, you don't need men to support you financially. So now you're in the, the most powerful position in your life. You get to choose who you want to invest your heart in. You're not, you're not relegated to dependency anymore. You have the capacity to be in your sovereign being. So he's acting distant. Does it mean it's over for him? Who knows? You can date differently. You can change this narrative by introducing radical honesty, laying your cards on the table and the rules of engagement. And you can head off the past by doing this early rather than later. Can this ch could, could it be over for him? There's always the possibility of turning something around with intentionality. Sadly, men oftentimes don't value something until they've lost it. This is why they will tell you that you should pull away. You should lean back, although I'm not a big fan of leaning back. I invite you to lean into your sovereignty, take a break from a relationship, don't communicate for a while. And if then he wants the relationship back, you establish the rules of engagement going forward. It's the only, most likely it's the only, with a seasoned relationship, the only time you're going to get him to listen is when you've left the relationship. My mother once got so angry at my father that she walked out of the house and he didn't know if she was going to come back. And he eventually drove around the street and said, come back to the house. And then he finally was willing to listen to her. Sometimes you have to make such a radical stand for your sovereignty, for what you want to get a person to listen up. This is why there is a recommendation that you take a break from a relationship. Take a big break from incessant communication with one another. And then when you come back together, reestablish something new. And many of you ladies, sadly, have duct tape over your mouth. And what I mean by this, and I'm sorry, but you're afraid to speak up because you're afraid that they might abandon you. Well, guess what? If they abandon you, that's what you want. You want them to leave. You only want to be in relationship with someone who wants to be in relationship with you. Is it over? Possibly. When he goes distant or silent, it might mean that he's just not capable of leaning into a relationship. You have a choice. You can speak your truth. Just do it from a kind place. By the way, I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. Chapter one, 
Speak your truth. Do it with kindness. Chapter nine. If it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Speak up. The most important relationship you'll ever have is the relationship with yourself. So start speaking up. And if they can't meet you, that's okay. You can move on. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Excuse me, my nose is scratching. If it is, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, hey, there's links below to schedule a discovery call, to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get the books I recommend, to get my dating vows, all listed below. And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Merrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love, hug of love, if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.